The Indiana State Police have had lots of help from the NCMEC, FBI, the GBI, and other agencies in the course of the investigation. The investigation went down different directions with no suspect ever declared until October 2022 when Richard Allen was arrested. On February 10, 2017, the U.S. Marshals worked with the Indiana State Police to arrest 26-year-old Kokomo resident Elliot Von Schaffner on federal charges of possession and distribution of child sex abuse material. The NCMEC were working with the Indiana State Police prior to the Anthony Schatz direction, and no proof was ever shown that Keegan's Dropbox ever opened up the largest child sex abuse material investigation in Indiana history. The Indiana State Police have made a pattern of mistakes over the course of the investigation, from the lack of transparency to the unneeded dramatics of Superintendent Doug Carter mentioning The Shack, a religious book and movie, in a metaphorical sense which, along with other statements, fueled the flames of the conspiracies regarding the case. The two confusing sketches that the investigators initially claimed were two different people, and then later backtracking to claim the young bridge guy sketch was the same person as the old bridge guy sketch. The Indiana State Police and the Delphi Police were confused from the very start of the investigation. I don't believe Indiana State Police thoroughly looked at and protected vital information, such as the alleged killer. Richard Matthew Allen telling a conservation officer, Dan Doolin, supposedly on the 14th of February 2017, before the bridge guy image, which was released the day after on the 15th, that he, Richard Allen, was there at the bridge on the day the girls went missing and were murdered. It's been stated that Indiana State Police may have lost the tip about Richard Allen, even though it's not been clarified as of yet in an official capacity in a public statement. The Keegan Klein, a.k.a. Anthony Schatz, direction in the case, in my opinion, was a Hail Mary attempt by the Indiana State Police in December 2021. Keegan Klein was recently sentenced in an unrelated case to 43 years, with three years suspended over the 25 counts of child sex abuse material charges he was charged with. Keegan Klein talked to Liberty German, one of the victims in the Delphi case, using a catfish profile called Anthony Schatz. He and his father's home was raided on February 25, 2017, with the Indiana State Police working with the FBI. In the search of the Klein home, multiple devices such as Keegan's phones and a tablet were taken and analyzed to find disturbing and vile content such as children being abused to numerous text chat communications with underage girls throughout the country. Shortly after the search of the Klein residence, FBI Special Agent Robert Ramsey, who was in charge of the search of the home, made a statement saying the FBI do not believe the individual, Keegan Klein, had any connection to the murders of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Keegan Klein was arrested and interviewed in February 2017 and then subsequently released to live his life. In 2020, Keegan Klein was arrested on child sex abuse material related charges after a rookie police officer, David Vito, decided to go back and look at the old information Keegan was then put in an interview and interrogated where Vito and another officer asked Keegan different questions in regards to his time in Las Vegas, Keegan's internet searches, and his communications with Liberty German via the Catfish Anthony Schatz account. I believe a lot of what was said about Keegan's actions to be true, but I also think that some of it was exaggerated to exert pressure on Keegan to cough up some answers. The erasing of the phone Keegan held back could be that Keegan had explicit images or video of Liberty German on the phone and panicked, thus wiping the device. Keegan Klein alluded in an interview with Barbara McDonald that the investigators did not believe he was the killer of Libby and Abby, but his dad, Tony Klein, was the one responsible. Tony Klein may have abused a child physically by fracturing a young boy's orbital bone, and it may have been reasonable to look at him as the possible killer, but... No witnesses saw him at the Munnan High Bridge that day, or his son, Keegan Klein. And I think they would have been seen in the area on Monday, February 13th, 2017. Tony Klein's voice sounded nothing like the audio from Libby's recording, nor did he ever dress in the style of fashion of clothing Bridge Guy was wearing. He rarely, if ever, wore jeans and mostly wore basketball-type shorts. 
The argument the Klein theorists push forth is that maybe they just worked with Allen to catfish the girls to the bridge, which doesn't entirely seem very logical based on how Keegan was caught and after his conviction on his child sex abuse material charges. Keegan and his father, Tony, have both given over their DNA, hair follicles and both completed lie detectors, which Tony claimed he passed. From the Ron Logan search warrant affidavit, it mentioned unknown fibers, and the DNA the investigators are believed to have is partial or weak touch DNA. If you are to believe the two audio samples, Guys and Down the Hill is the voice from the alleged killer and the individual who is bridge guy Richard Allen, then Indiana State Police were far off from reality if they believed Tony Klein to be the killer recorded in the video on the bridge. For five weeks from mid-August 2022 to September 2022, a river search was conducted by the Indiana State Police in the Wabash River near the Kelly Avenue Bridge in Peru, Indiana, not too far from where the Kleins lived. The murder sheet claimed the river search was connected to Delphi and alluded it to be connected to Keegan Klein. Murder Sheet worked with Wish TV, and in their article, it was stated that Keegan Klein is a notorious liar and that he lied to investigators about what was in the Wabash River and ultimately wasted Indiana State Police's time and money. In the period of time the river search was being conducted, Keegan Klein claimed he was involved in the murders with his father and that his father was the one who murdered the girls whilst he waited in a red jeep. He also claimed in a chirp that his father had the clothing bridge guy wore and burned it in a fire pit and threw the murder weapon in the river on the way home. He told someone that information in a chirp, which got back to the murder sheet. Keegan Klein was taken into Indiana State Police custody at the start of the river search around August 19, 2022. He supposedly was interviewed at the Grissom Air Force Base in Peru, Indiana, even though I don't know how true that information is. It was also stated that Keegan looked up the Marathon gas station and that Indiana State Police mishandled and lost video surveillance from the Delphi Marathon gas station on the day of the murders. I think the Marathon gas station information in regards to Keegan was misinformation, and uh, that info had been altered from early information about an older gentleman named Jim Maxwell who was living at the Bicycle Bridge Road home which got searched on the 16th of February 2017. Jim Maxwell was seen wearing similar attire to Bridge Guy at the Delphi Marathon gas station and was subsequently tipped in because of it. I can see why people may think Keegan is connected to Richard Allen due to the timing of the river search and the timing of Richard Allen's search of his home and his arrest in October 2022. The problem I have is I haven't seen any tangible proof that Keegan Klein or his dad Tony Klein knew and or were connected in some way, whether that be a digital connection through an alias username or a real life connection. There was also no mention of the Wabash River search in any of the recently released court documents relating to Richard Allen, nor has there been any evidence shown that Keegan took a deal which would somehow give him immunity from the Delphi case if he rolled on Richard Allen. Richard Allen's wife, Kathy, Allen's mother, lived near the Grissom Air Museum in Peru, Indiana around the time of the murders, and her brother, John Walker, who passed away on September 27, 2016, at the age of 39, due to complications from a motorcycle accident, also lived in Peru, Indiana. Richard grew up in Mexico, Indiana. It's possible Rick Allen knew the Kleins even though both Keegan and his father claimed they never knew him. I think it could simply be a small town USA coincidence. Keegan catfishing numerous girls in Indiana and catfishing being a common occurrence with television shows and YouTube channels made about it heightens the chances, in my opinion, of Keegan's connection to the Delphi case simply being a coincidence, and coincidences do and have happened in murder cases. People often wonder what was the 2019 press conference all about. 
Who was Dougie Carter talking to? He was talking to an FBI profile, and they did not know who Bridge Guy was at the time, or whoever young Bridge Guy sketch was, because they were interviewing men in Delphi who were not even at the bridge that day, and names not brought up as media persons of interest, males in the range of 20 and 40 years old living in the area and close to Delphi. They did not know who owned the vehicle at the abandoned Child Protection Services building at that point. The Delphi police did not have any strong lead given the different directions they went down with persons of interest such as the landowner Ron Logan, who a few still believe is the real bridge guy. And he didn't lie about where he was that day because he wasn't supposed to be driving and was on his last parole violation warning, and if he was caught, he would face prison time. No, he lied because he murdered Liberty and Abigail, even though no evidence connected him to the murders, such as a DNA and a blood trail. Nor was it ever confirmed as fact he was the man in the poor quality video recording. None of the witnesses that day described six-foot Ron Logan either. I personally don't believe Bridge Guy is Ronald Logan, and I have always thought Ron's legs were too long to be Bridge Guy. If you want to believe Bridge Guy is Ron Logan, that's fine. That's your opinion. In the press conference for the announcement of Richard Allen's arrest on Halloween 2022, prosecutor Nick McClellan claimed they, meaning law enforcement, believe other actors might be involved, and he wants Allen's probable cause affidavit sealed, alluding to that to be the particular reason. I thought that statement was quite vague and didn't give me confidence that others were actually involved in the crime. He did not say suspect or suspects. He did state the case was still an active investigation and the Abby and Libby tip line was still open. Doug Carter claimed this is not the day to celebrate. In June 2022, I made a tip about two individuals from Delphi to the Abby and Libby tip line and got a response the next day on Monday the 13th of June 2022 from Carroll County saying why is that? In February 2023 I got another response to the same tip I made in June 2022 from Miami County Peru Indiana Police wanting to know more about these two individuals who may or may not have been at the bridge that day. I don't think they were and the police wanted to call me to talk or meet up to talk about the tip I made. The response in February 2023 made me realize the investigators had no real strong leads and had no real clue who the other actor or actors were who may be involved in the crime. I think Nick McClellan said that other actors or another actor may be involved, so he has an insurance policy in the chance another individual is connected and what he said about other individuals possibly being involved has been claimed in the past, in other cases, as standard protocol. It doesn't necessarily mean the investigators know for an absolute 100% fact that others are involved. I think it's also quite possible there's an anomaly which came up in regards to the crime scene, and maybe there's forensic evidence from the crime scene which matches another person. That is all speculation but I've seen nothing to suggest currently there's other actors involved. I don't believe there's a grand conspiracy involving Carroll County corruption and that they're framing Richard Allen. Nor do I believe there's some huge pedo ring because the dominoes would have fallen by now and quickly, which is usually the case in child sex abuse material rings. Doug Carter has claimed there's many tentacles involved and people online tend to try to read into his statements to try and find some kind of clue in his words. I think Doug has a habit of speaking in riddles because he's used to trying to protect criminal investigations and to protect information from leaking out. In fairness to Indiana State Police, they never claimed the Kleins were connected to Delphi in any official capacity outside of Keegan's catfish account being mentioned in connection to the case. Doug Carter has done a good job tiptoeing around questions in relation to the Kleins and currently as of September 2023 there's still no arrests or other actors or connections or tentacles connected to the crime who've been charged and arrested in conjunction with the murders. Doug Carter has also stated recently that a case was complex where an Indiana state trooper was killed in a road collision 
and the investigators knew instantly what had happened from video surveillance. Doug Carter makes statements which have no real meat to them and can be interpreted in different ways. I think his statements could be seen as irresponsible at times because some of the statements he has made has fueled the fires of the conspiracies regarding the Delphi case involving the family of one of the victims in particular. I currently believe, and this is my opinion, and I'm entitled to this opinion, is that Richard Matthew Allen is the kidnapper and the person who murdered Liberty German and Abigail Williams based on the current evidence at hand. I believe he is bridge guy from the way he moves using comparisons to him in videos at JC's bar moving and walking. In his own words, he put himself at the bridge at the time period of when the girls were kidnapped and murdered. Witnesses saw Richard Allen. Yes, that's why they're in Richard Allen's PCA because they saw him and that's evidence the prosecution are using. I have no horse in the race. I don't particularly care if there's 50 people involved in the crime. The evidence I've seen in the PCA and the court documents doesn't suggest there's anyone else involved in the murders. I try to stay with logic and common sense versus emotion and bias. Richard's own defense lawyer, Andrew Baldwin, put in a statement that Rick regularly walked the trails. Richard also knew Anna Williams, the mother of one of the victims, Abigail Williams. Did Keegan Klein just say, hey man, do you want to murder two girls today? What's the motive? Oh, a snuff movie. Right. I don't buy it. I think due to Delphi being a small town and Richard Allen being very familiar with the Monon High Bridge and the area working at CVS in Delphi, that he could have found out in real life that the girls were going to the bridge that day on a day where school was off. There was numerous items taken from the search of Rick Allen's home, such as numerous cell phones, phone chargers, a GPS tracker, laptops, SD cards, external hard drive, USB drives, clothing, knives, guns, and ammunition. Some speculate that maybe a burner phone was used to evade being tracked on the day of the murders. A cutting of a carpeted area underneath the spare tire of the Ford Focus was taken to be analyzed. Two swabs were taken from the driver lap belt and one swab of the driver shoulder belt of the Ford Focus. Two swabs were also taken from the passenger side carpeted floorboards. Luminol was likely used and maybe blood was found. It's possible they took fibers to attempt to match them to the fibers they acquired from the crime scene. In the probable cause affidavit, it stated on the same day Richard's home was searched, he was interviewed again by investigators. The person who interviewed him was conservation officer Dan Doolin. Rick Allen stated he was on the trails on February 13, 2017. Rick Allen stated he saw juvenile girls on the trails east of Freedom Bridge and that he went on to the Monon High Bridge Trail. Rick said he went to the bridge to watch the fish and later in his statement said he walked out to the first platform on the bridge. He stated he then walked back, sat on a bench on the trail and then left. He stated he parked his car on the side of an old building. He said that he was wearing blue jeans and a blue or black Carhartt jacket with a hood. He advised he may have been wearing some type of head covering as well. He further claimed he saw no one else except for the juvenile girls he saw east of Freedom Bridge. He told investigators that he owns firearms and they are at his home. I won't go over all of the probable cause affidavit in this video. The general crux of it is that a bullet was found with extraction markings which matched Allen's gun. Witnesses saw him and he was described to be dressed similar to the man in the video in and around the time period when the victims, Liberty and Abigail, were murdered. Witnesses described him to be wearing a black or blue jacket. Witness descriptions can be notoriously unreliable, but perhaps some who are skeptical might think the witnesses saw two people, a man in black and a man with a navy hoodie or jacket. The height differentials with the witness descriptions are not too indifferent to think it wasn't Richard Allen, in my opinion. The bullet found at the crime scene with the bullet markings or bullet striations or extraction marks could be argued to be junk science, even though I don't believe it to be black and white basing that on how they determine the percentages with false positives in regards to the examiners analyzing the bullet. In the state of Maryland, 
Ballistics experts can only say whether the markings on a bullet are consistent or inconsistent with bullets fired from a particular gun. It doesn't seem like the bullet evidence is going to be thrown out and there's been rumblings of Richard Allen cooperating, but I've seen no real evidence of that yet. Just a behind the scenes rumor. Richard Allen, according to an official document, has admitted to his wife he committed the crime he was charged with no less than five times whilst talking on the public jail phone to his wife. And the phone call can legally be recorded and is usually standard protocol in prisons. Allen has admitted he did the crimes, but the precise details and how incriminating his confessions were is unknown to the public currently. If the case goes to trial, it's going to be hard to dismiss his alleged confessions given the totality of the evidence in regards to him putting himself in the time period of when the crime took place. Usually false confessions are given in interview rooms with investigators than given to a loved one, such as his wife. Richard Matthew Allen was charged with the felony murder statute, uh, which is easier for the prosecutors to prove due to uh, the kidnapping felony element in the charges. I think given that he's confessed, the defense are now clutching at straws, in my opinion. And I think it's an uphill struggle. The defense could ask for proof if they haven't already got it for the metadata to see the accurate time of when Liberty recorded the man on the bridge. I think on paper, looking at the case from a raw perspective without being too assumptive, I think the case is not as complex as I think the investigators have made it to be. I think the case could have been solved within the month of when the crime occurred and the police were just out of their depth because something so rare happened in their small town and perhaps they had too many cooks in the kitchen and egos may have gotten in the way. I could be completely wrong and it could be as complex as many people believe and I'd be willing to change my opinion if what was presented as factual showed other actors or another suspect or suspects to be involved. I hope justice is served for Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Rick Allen is still innocent until proven guilty in the court of law and I will continue to take interest in the case until it's finally over. Thank you for watching.